Hey guys, today I just wanted to talk about how to improve your tone for traditional Scruggs style playing. Now you'll notice that more modern progressive players, a lot of times they tend to play with a more mellow sound, and then the traditional players usually had more of a sharp twang to their banjo sound. And today I'm going to show you the difference between that and how to achieve each of them. And before we get started, I just wanted to mention that if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button. That helps me out a ton and I would really appreciate it, so thank you. What I see a lot of times, especially from beginners, is that their tone is pretty inconsistent with what they're playing. So what I'm going to tell you about today is how to get either a twang from your banjo or how to get that mellow sound depending on what you like. Okay, and the first step to this is where you are picking the strings in relation to where the neck and the bridge are. This is huge, and I see a lot of people who don't really seem to know the difference that it makes, but it, it makes an enormous difference. For example, if I wanted to play this lick and make it sound like a driving traditional Scruggs lick, I would need to play it like this. What you'll see a lot of times beginners doing is they're planted way up here, then listen to how it sounds if you do it like that. I mean, that sounds kind of nice, but it's not like driving bluegrass sound, the traditional bluegrass sound. So like, I'll do a direct comparison. At first I'll play by the bridge and then closer to the neck. So the difference there is huge. And then even picking closer to the middle, you'll still get that mellower sound. Versus. So yeah, to get a sharper twang out of your banjo, you need to be close to the bridge. And to get that more mellow sound, do it closer to the neck. And then like I said, you'll notice that a lot of modern players like Noam Pekelny, Bela Fleck, they play a lot closer to the neck. And then the old school players like Earl Scruggs, J.D. Crow, Sonny Osborne, they would play close to the bridge. So yeah, just depending on what you're playing, you'll want to change it. Most of the songs you start out with will sound better closer to the bridge because most of those are traditional songs. Okay, and tip number two, this is something that I believe is often overlooked, and it has to do with how you pick the string. So you want your fingers to be kind of arched as if you were scratching a mosquito bite. So you want to kind of do it like... That'll allow you to have a good attack on the string, and it'll just have a more solid, crisp sound. The other way that this is sometimes done that I don't believe sounds as good is people sometimes kind of have their hand like that, and their fingers are almost straight. Say so sometimes they'll pick it up here, they'll play Cripple Creek like this. That just, it does not sound right. I mean, you never see professionals doing it like that, and to me it just does not sound good. Whenever your fingers are like that, you just can't get the same attack even down here. It's just... I mean, you have to move your fingers a lot further to hit the string, which means you won't be able to play as fast, and just the attack on the string isn't as good. So yeah, you want to keep your fingers arched in like that, and then hit the string as if you were scratching a mosquito bite. That'll allow you to play faster and also have a better tone. And this last tip has nothing to do with how you're playing the banjo, it has to do with how it is set up, and that is the head tension. This is an enormous thing, and I didn't realize for a long time just how important this is, but how tight your head is will affect the sound of your banjo drastically. If your head is loose, there won't be as sharp of a twang or a pop from your banjo, and if it's too tight, you could risk breaking or it could just sound a little bit too tinny. You want to find that middle ground. For a long time I had my banjo heads way too loose because I didn't really know how to adjust them and how they need to be adjusted. Well, what you'll find is that most players say to adjust it to a G sharp. And Steve Huber does that. I see all kinds of people saying to do a G sharp. That's just best overall to get a good pop from your banjo. And the way you do that, listen to this. You tap it, mute the strings first so you don't get the overtones from those. Tap the head with your pick. You can hear that note. You can hear a note there. And you just tune that note to a G sharp, and I'll show you how to adjust your head here in a minute, but first I want to show you the notes. So listen to this. Hear how that's the same note, that's a G sharp. So that's where you want your head, because if your head is too loose, like I said, your banjo just won't have a good pop to it. So I'll show you a different angle, and I'll show you how your head is adjusted. Some people are a little bit scared to do this. You have to take off the resonator, but believe me, it's not scary. It's super easy, so do not be afraid to do this. 
Okay, so like I said a minute ago, adjusting your head tension is super easy. If you have a resonator banjo, first you got to take off the resonator. If it's open back, obviously you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, I just keep these screws finger tight. You'll take out these four screws that keep your resonator on. They should be easy to find. So I just keep mine finger tight, like I said, because periodically your resonator has to be taken off to make adjustments. And finger tight is good enough to keep it on and they never even come loose on mine. So. Anyway, you do that first. Okay, so that step's super easy. Now you'll just grab your banjo, you'll take it out of the resonator, put the resonator to the side. Okay, and then you will flip it over. Okay, and you'll see all these bracket nuts lining it. It's all of these. And most banjos, at least the three that I've got, and I believe just about any banjo will come with what you need to do this. It's a bracket wrench. So you will take this, and this head does not need to be adjusted, so I'm not going to actually turn it, but I'll show you what you would need to do. You would take it and put it on there, and for the first time, you'd want to turn each one about half a turn. And do that to every single one of them. Okay? And then, like I demonstrated a minute ago, you'd go back, tap the head. If it's too loose, tighten it some more. And if it's too tight, loosen it a little bit. But yeah, the key to this is just making very small adjustments at a time because just turning each one half a turn can raise the pitch by a half or even a full step sometimes. So yeah, this is super easy to do. Do not be afraid to do this. Um, very, very simple, like I said. So yeah, that's how you adjust the head. And to get the resonator back on, obviously, you just do the same thing in reverse. You put it back in, put the screws back. So that's pretty self-explanatory. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful or at least entertaining. If you got any questions about any of this, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.